Okay, well, we have quite a nice uh, amount of people that have uh, attended today's webinar, so it's really exciting. Since this is our first webinar, really focusing uh, on the Drupal business community and providing some education on how to help you sell, especially in the enterprise markets. Um, I am recording today's presentation. So uh, if you want to pass this webinar on to other people uh, and at your company or your, your peers at other companies, you will have that opportunity. Um, and I wanted to um, just do a little housekeeping before we get started. Uh, first, uh, if you uh, move the slide next, Stephanie, to the housekeeping slide, you can see that um, uh, we are all going to be able to ask questions today as Brad Powers um, speaks about his experience of selecting a CMS and how he chose Drupal for Whole Foods. And if you have a question, please use the question section of your control panel rather than the chat section. We'll be monitoring that question section and um, Brad, will be, Brad will be answering questions as he goes. Um, and also, if you're listening from the computer um, versus calling in, if you're having a, any issues hearing, make sure you're wearing a headset. And in the audio section of the control panel, select the mic and speaker option. And then after this presentation, you will uh, see a webinar survey um, appear. And we just ask if you'll give us feedback because we want to, the, the webinar program is relatively new for the Drupal Association. And we want to make sure uh, that we hear from you what kind of content you want to hear next. And we'll start lining those, those up in our series. Um, but before we get started, before I hand this over to Brad, let me just give you a quick high view of the Drupal Association. I can see the attendee list, and I, I see lots of names of people that are really involved with the Drupal Association, but I also see some new people. So I wanted just to uh, give everyone a quick overview. Uh, so the Drupal Association is based in Portland, Oregon, um, but we serve the whole global community, and we actually have staff in all, all sorts of places, and uh, not all just in Portland. Uh, but our mission is to foster and support the Drupal community. So basically, we take care of all the, the maintenance um, of things and, and helping to educate you just so you can have a growing community that's contributing to the project and just uh, freeing you up to do what you do best, which is you know, connecting, collaborating on the code, accelerating the project, and also getting together and having a fun time, which I know is a big part of our community. Um, and so we get funds from lots of different ways, whether it's from our Drupal cons or international conferences, or our membership programs, or the supporting partner program, um, which I can talk about uh, at the end of today's presentation. And, um, oh, we have hosting partners, and all these different programs generate revenue that we use to fund community programs. So one of our biggest focuses right now is hiring um, a Drupal.org technical team that will provide the improvements uh, that we all need so that the site serves all of the different personas. It's really easy to navigate and find information where you can learn about Drupal and uh, be able to uh, get the life cycle so you're adopting and then contributing back. Um, and so we, you know, we have a lot of work happening on that front already. Um, and then for uh, the hosting services, we pay for that as well as the hardware for the infrastructure. And we host our DrupalCons or international events. Uh, we have some coming, we have um, DrupalCon Prague coming up at the end of this month. Um, and then we also have grants that uh, anyone can apply for if you have a way to further the project and grow the community, whether it's uh, starting a new camp or you want to do a road show with a couple companies um, to uh, evangelize Drupal to uh, decision makers, we have money available for you to apply to. And you just go to association.drupal.org slash grants, tells you how to apply, and we still have money available this year. So definitely uh, look into that opportunity or contact me and I can tell you more. Um, the other program that we have is called Global Training Days. And um, around the world, uh, we organize trainers to provide a free or near free training uh, on the same day. Um, and it's, it's a way to grow the developer base in your local community. But if you're a training company, it's a great loss leader because once you give them, say, the Hello Drupal type of uh, training, then you can upsell them for your three or five day training. Uh, so if you would like to get information about that, please contact me as well. 
but the next one will be in November. So as I mentioned, there are some things coming up. The uh, DrupalCon Prague is September 23rd to 27th. We uh, already have over 1,700 attendees, so we're really excited about this event. And um, we have some special um, opportunities here for businesses to connect at our CXO. It's a great place to talk about your business challenges and to brainstorm ways to uh, push through them and grow in a sustainable way. Um, we have the uh, Drupal Global Training Days, November 15th, as I mentioned before. And if you want to find more about um, our activities and our events, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Um, you can do that by going to association.drupal.org. And right on the home page is our link for our newsletter. So with that, I'd like to introduce Brad Power, who's the IT director at Whole Foods. Um, he and I met at DrupalCon Portland. Uh, he is the person who chose Drupal for uh, his company, and he was very passionate about giving back to our community. So our site owners and all of your clients are very much a part of our community, and it's really great that we're trying, we can find ways to help them give back. Uh, code obviously is king, but also insight into how we can grow Drupal adoption is really important. And so, Brad, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today and um, helping us understand your process so that we can all, all learn from that. And um, I will send over the presentation to you, Brad, so you can take over. Okay. Or actually, I think you can just, sorry about that, guys. I'm still learning this That's system. And Stephanie, do you mind setting uh, your presentation up again? I just hit the wrong button. Sure. Um, let's see. So you want me to take it off? Uh, if, you, if you just hit share screen. Okay. Sorry, everybody who's watching. We just got this new webinar platform, and I'm still learning it. We go. Great. If you just go into presentation mode, that'd be great. Okay, Brad, while well, we're just kind of resetting that up, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody on sure. the call? Yeah, thanks, Megan. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining today. As, as Megan mentioned, we had a chance to connect at uh, TripleCon Portland, which was my first one, so it was really enjoyable to get exposure to the vibrant community. And we spent a lot of time trying to figure out ways that um, I could contribute and Whole Foods could contribute, obviously us setting up a booth at DrupalCon didn't make the most sense. Um, so this is one of the ways that, that I hope you find is useful and look forward to getting feedback in the survey about either other topics that you'd want uh, or maybe other people from my organization you'd like to hear from. We talked perhaps about having somebody more on the marketing side come in and, and, and speak as well. So um, please uh, know this is our virgin journey and be gentle with us. A uh, little bit about me. Um, nine years with Whole Foods Market. Um, I lead the tech teams here that support uh, multiple websites, uh, not all Drupal. Um, we have some old hand-coded stuff, some WordPress stuff. Our guest-facing WholeFoodsMarket.com site is, is a Drupal site. Uh, I also support our online commerce application. Um, and we made the decision uh, probably about a year and a half ago to, to go with Drupal, and our site launched August of last year, so first year anniversary just recently. Um, and, and kind of as I mentioned, I'm really excited to try to figure out new ways or, or ways I can bring my experience and skill set, which is not a uh, development background, to the community. So um, hopefully this will be useful. I guess we're ready for next one whenever. So I kind of went through kind of what we were thinking um, in a few different slides, and then also towards the end, just some lessons learned that I hope might be valuable for all of you when you're working with your clients and partners, um, things that I've thought a lot about and, and would probably do differently, or, or, or kind of what I'll expose to you more towards the end. So kind of what we were thinking. Um, as many of you who follow technology probably realize there are several large, uh, I'll call them paid players, 
um, that that seem, in my opinion, to be adopting customers as much as they're adopting and acquiring new technologies. And so one of the things that we wanted to do was look at, well, what are our year-over-year -year costs? And not just think about the cost that we pay in terms of uh, maintenance and enterprise agreements, but also the the cost that we pay by getting deeper and deeper with with a given vendor. Um, so as we as we've seen the shift, one one of the I guess problems or concerns that we're seeing is, uh, you know, large vendor X, not to use other people's names and cast stones, but large vendor X, if they own you on your team member PeopleSoft HR side. Uh, and then they go out and acquire whoever it is that you use for your front-end creative content and whoever perhaps you use to for your CMS, uh, you have less and less ability to really negotiate because they know they've got you deeper and deeper into their overall portfolio. Um, and even when you have longer-term contracts set, um, like we have some enterprise agreements with several of the larger players, you, you get the perception from a, from a short-term cost benefit that, that this is a much better deal but you just invested yourself in, into this technology for three years, and over the course of the three years, they're banking that you're going to get more and more users and have more and more software and be more and more invested. And then if they acquire a couple of other companies over that three-year span, then, again, it, it's harder and harder to, to negotiate because they want to bundle more and more together to, to give you the lower price, which, again, makes it harder and harder to get out. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. That was one of the, the – a, a big cost – part of the equation um, that, that we factored in. Um, another big one in just going to a, 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 an open source platform, and we're, we're seeing this even in, in, and you all probably are as well, even in paid products is the whole idea of being able to get indemnity and how indemnity works and how um, trolls are becoming a real problem. And so one of the things that we looked a lot at in moving to open source because that was, that was new for us is, well, how do we protect ourselves and what things do we need to consider in terms of of costs. Um, and so those would be things to make sure that, that your partners and clients are thinking about. Um, we did find a year or so ago a few firms that do offer some kind of insurance assurances. I, I don't frankly know uh, how credible they are. We didn't dig very deep into it. Uh, a couple of things that we looked at doing is making sure our legal team was, was heavily involved in those conversations and that we were really doing some kind of risk reward analysis and saying, okay, so in theory, this is free your software, we can't just take all that money and go put it someplace else. We have to reserve some of that money, um, A, to protect ourselves in case we do have some sort of patent infringement that pops up. Um, B, we need to invest some of that money back into the community to, to make sure it's healthy. And so making sure that you're setting some kind of uh, dollars aside or advising your clients to set some kind of dollars aside for any risk that might come up is important. Uh, another thing that we've been able to do also is work with any partners that help us uh, either build a module or recode a module that they carry some of that indemnity, basically saying, you know, we'll stand up in court with you if module Y, somebody comes and claims that, that there's code in there that they wrote and they own a, they own a patent on it. Um, so it, al it also helps leverage that risk across multiple providers uh, because then if they're coming after your client's company for the money, some of that risk is deferred to a smaller company. It's not so appealing to take the smaller company with the smaller pockets to court. So a couple of ideas on indemnity there. And uh, as Megan said, anytime questions come up, please feel free. I'm trying to keep one eye on that and one eye on the deck. Uh, so let me know and we can entertain them uh, or we can do them all at the end, whatever is good for everybody. So what else are we thinking? Well, obviously there's cost and, you know, there's long-term uh, assurances that you need. And the other part is just how does the content, you know, how easy is it? What 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 can you do with it? Um, so one of the things that w we were frankly a little trapped with as the technology team is is being kind of a bottleneck for our content team. And in working with a few other partners and having a chance to talk to other users uh, on the technology side at, at, at DrupalCon, this was a theme that I heard with all of them. Um, whatever CMS-like or homegrown system they were using came to the bottleneck with the technology team when it was time to deploy or, or, or push changes out. So we were definitely looking for something that gave some more creativity and flexibility to our to our content team to, to be able to publish content on their own. Um, and as I mentioned, it, it frees them to, to do that work at the pace that the marketing team needs it to do um, and, and, and allows the site to be you know richer and more dynamic and more responsive to 
any kind of current trends or news or whatever is, is going on in the in the WWW there. Um, the other thing that's obviously important is how engaging and how rich of an experience is this for our guests? Because for us, is if you all look at our site, it's it's an, it's an information site, it's an engagement site, it's it's a way we want to create affinity and loyalty uh, that that aren't purchase based and aren't discount or coupon based. It's about us being able to build a rich experience that hopefully um, gets closer and closer to mimicking what it's like in our in our store experience in terms of knowing who you are and being able to connect important articles or lifestyle preferences based upon either the behavior that you exhibit or the information you you give about yourself. So for us, this is this is a key area that, that drove uh, Drupal to the top. Um, you know, we really felt that that it would allow us to provide a, a richer social and you know more engaging and integrated experience for the guests. You know, I think the marketing team in particular was attracted um, by, I guess, at a high level, what 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 they said was what they felt like was a product that started with social and 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 learned to to do uh, content versus a few others that are content based initially and are now trying to learn how to be more social. Um, and then kind of last point there is reiterating what I said already. They they really felt like it was the tool that was going to allow them to have uh, a, a very focused, customized, the, in, uh, an engaged experience with with an individual user and. We've, we've taken a few steps towards that. Uh, we know we know we have a long way to go, um, but we've already built in functionality that recognizes you know you as a user. This is your store. These are events or venues in the store that are specific to your store and, and the experience that you want. Next slide, please. The other thing that is always attracting is is being able to do kind of what you want when, when you need to do it. Um, you know, other partners that we work with in other areas of technology, it's it's difficult to get the priorities that you have on their roadmap. Uh, sometimes it's even harder to get them to deliver what they say is on their roadmap when they say it should be delivered on their roadmap. Uh, and so we wanted to be in a, more of a of a control and driving. I mean, we really see this as an opportunity to to push Drupal and 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 support the community with initiatives that are important to our business that we think will resonate with others and and so we really appreciated the ability to to work and collaborate with the community and give back to the community to to drive this richer uh, engagement um, and we just struggled to do that with many of our, our other technical partners due to either their very long development cycles or the craziness that you have to get on some executive board to be a part of some decision-making group to craft what's going to happen or kind of the worst case, you get what they give you, and then you have to force your business to work around whatever you're given. Another area that's important to us, and it's uh, not last or, or not at the bottom because it's the least important. It's last because I want to, you know, really hammer on this one. Um, we have a set of core values that drive our decision making, uh, and that's true in technology, just like it is in product. But one of the things as technologists that we're excited about is it's it's easy and it's closer to who we are as a as a grocery retailer to think about creating a win-win relationship for a product vendor. You know, if somebody brings or we find this great artisanal product, it's much easier to think about creating win-win relationships for them in terms of being able to invest in them and help them grow and help them attract more more jobs and and grow their business and grow their product line to to expand in multiple regions. It's a little harder to think about that and how we can contribute that on the technology side, but this is one area where we felt like we really could. We could get invested in a community and give back to a technology that not only helps us grow, but, but we think can help a lot of other businesses grow. I mean, we already know about the thousands of, 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 of nonprofit sites around the world that are able to leverage the modules that the, that the community delivers. And, and we feel like this is a way on the technology side that we can stay true true to those values, which um, are, are really a lot harder for us to to get our heads around in the technology space. Next one. And, so hopefully, um, this will be kind of some meat for all of you uh, around kind of yeah. Oh, Brad, I was going to say there are some questions Question? um, about those last slides. If you go there. Oh, I'm not seeing section. them pop up. I'm sorry. Uh, if you don't see them, I can read them out to you. Yeah, sure. Great. So. Um, the first one was about, is it, uh, this was kind of like back towards the beginning of your slides. 
Yeah. And the question was about, um, is it really good? And does it help in selling to talk about risks? I guess there's questions about like patent trolls and, and do you have to deal with anything like uh, risks in relation to patent trolls is pretty much the question. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there there is a risk there, and and um, we are experiencing that also on kind of the pseudo freeware side. Thinking about, you know, what 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 you've seen with Red Hat and a couple of other products like that, where the community has created them, but then they've kind of been packetized for commercial use. Um, so those have been real risks for us there. So as we kind of went into our first big, you know, open source adventure, um, we we spent a lot of time with our leadership and our executive team trying to understand what we were exposing ourselves to and making sure that we protected ourselves. So I, I would say the size of your client, the, the larger your client, probably the more relevant it's going to be because then they'll, at least in our experience, the, the, the trolls realize what the pocket, you know, the, the net spend of that company is. Uh, and so it's much easier to go to, uh, you know, a, a billion dollar your company and say, pay us $100,000 right now and we'll settle out of court than it is a company that's only making $150,000 a year. So the, the bigger the company, I think the more you're exposed because the greater visibility you have and the more likely they, they, they believe you will be to settle out of court. So I think it's, it's an important point to consider with any of your larger clients that they're protecting themselves or really what you're doing in this space is you're just setting aside money to, to fight them if that's your choice. That's great. Thanks for that. I also I uh, just gave you I think visibility into the questions, but sure. Okay. The next um, one is is it really good and helps us to talk about patent trolls? Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't. And, and, oh, I see the other part of it. It talks about is, is does it help in selling? I, I think it's part of being a good partner, right? Is that you need to make sure that your client understands and goes into this eyes wide open with all the information you have. I, I certainly I'm not in the sales side. I, I probably wouldn't lead with it if I was you. But I think you know when you get in, you don't want them to have the perception that it's free, and that and that there's no cost. And so talking to them about how it's more effective or more efficient than what it is that they're paying now would probably be the way I would recommend you phrasing that. Is is thinking about it in terms of, you know, you're paying X for for whatever tool you use now. This tool is going to be more less expensive for you year over year, but there are a few other costs that you want to make sure you're considering. Um, it, I think it would help you have a, lo a better, longer-term relationship with whoever you work with. Proprietary software too. Yes, patent trolling is a risk, and I, I just covered that one with um, the problem that we have. So those, that's a good point as well. Has the ability. The next one has the ability to quickly put content messages to your customers. Increased your level of ideas. Has it innovated your work? Um, I think it's definitely uh, allowed us to 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 be more in. Uh, engaging with the guests and, and I use the example about the stores we didn't have the store specific profiles the way we do now um, so one of the ways that we've been able to do that is we actually have I think we're up to 359 stores today or something like that so we have a content administrator at each store that's able to publish the content that's relevant to their store so I think what that, what that's trying to do is help us connect again in a, in a digital space the same way we do at a store level um, but the question about it increasing our level of ideas, that's a good one. Um, we, we are looking at doing some other explorations. Uh, you know, I think Starbucks has a good program in place. Uh, I think uh, Pepsi has another good a model for, for how you can use your community to innovate. Um, so right now I'd say that's happening more in, a, in an analog mode, uh, more the comments that are received at the stores that are sometimes digital or sometimes handwritten. And as those uh, as those get to the marketing team and, and funnel up, there's a lot of um, ability in our company for uh, great ideas and decision making to 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 come up through the company versus versus top down and in a more traditional model. So hopefully it'll evolve and create a greater transparency and a greater engagement with our guests, which will lead to the question that Benjamin asked. The next one. Some clients used to tell me when I give them the budget about their requirement, it's too expensive uh, to be an open source. Um, how can I react? I mean, there there are costs there, and I guess they have to they have to weigh it across their organization. So the point that I was making earlier about you can't look at um, a specific item as the only cost if if you use seven different products from the same vendor. 
you have to look at it. I, I recommend that you help them look at it across the portfolio and say, well, yeah, it's great because they gave you this lower price, but are you really happy with the seven different things that you're getting? And if you add an eighth thing from that same vendor, how easy is it for you to get rid of any one of those things? Because, uh, again, that's the model that we're seeing more with the partners we deal with is they're putting lots of pieces together to give you a lower cost because they're creating more barriers to exit, right? And so I think that, that, that that's a way to help help them realize that there there are other costs. Um, and then I think there's there's probably also a part of it too, if it, and one of the things I'll talk about when what we learn is, um, you know, if they're planning on paying somebody to do all of the development work themselves, maybe they perceive that cost to be to be higher than if they're what their internal team is able to do, and and that's a little retooling. So if I didn't get to everything that you wanted there, um, Alexandra, please reply back. I think that's a uh, next one. So uh, what do we learn? Um, the development team here is changing from uh, current technology to Drupal, obviously. So my team didn't have a lot of exposure to, to Drupal. Um, so one of the things that we talked about and I would do a better job of moving forward is getting involved in the community early and recommending and, and getting active in your local meetups, uh, Drupal camps, whatever way you can get involved and learn and share. Um, Work with a partner to hold some multiple week Drupal development training. I think that um, Drupalize me and some of those other sources are great. I think that, that having a deeper, more focused uh, introduction to the tool and the and the methodology and framework is 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 very important. Um, one of the things that I would think about doing differently that I didn't do the first time um, was naturally, or at least for me. Um, taking the existing team and having them continue to focus on the site because they know it the best and leveraging more the the partner that you use to do the coding and build the Drupal site um, I would actually challenge your clients to think to, to do the opposite find somebody to come on and build and maintain your existing site for you so that you whatever team you imagine is going to be the long-term team is focused heavily with with the partner on building the site so that they can more easily maintain it. That might be what you guys already recommend. That wasn't what we did and something that I would do differently. And if at all possible, be sure that you bring in uh, somebody on your team that has a, a significant amount of experience. I think a partner is great and they can definitely bridge the gap, but um, having somebody that has a, a stronger experience and a stronger track record uh, is going to help your team grow and help your team feel more in control of their destiny. And I've had a couple of other questions pop up. What kind of content do we hold or would we like it to hold? Um, I mean, I, I think that the content that, it, that Drupal is able to hold now or our or CMS system to hold it, it, it is more than adequate for our needs. I think what, what we're trying to do is, is, again, more specifically target that content. So thinking about it that way, it's, it's associating more attributes with the content, and then as you're building the relationship with your guest and, and asking them questions more about what their, what their affinity is, their lifestyle preference, using those attributes to surface content that's more and more relevant for them. So be going beyond the store and understanding that you are trying to reduce salt in your diet or you're, you're gluten-free and beginning to expose blog articles that are about that or store events that are about that the same way you would in a, in a relationship you might have with somebody in the store or what, what we're really looking to do. The next question I have is what role did marketing play in the evaluation and how did you work together with them during the process? We partnered on it. Um, so we came up with a list of evaluation criteria that was a mix of marketing needs and technology needs and, and kind of some company business objectives. And then we vetted different platforms and also we, we used that selection criteria in determining our partner to help us build the site. Um, so I, I'd, I'd say it was an even share uh, in, 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 in how we, and how we made the decision and the number of people that were a part of the decision-making process. So hopefully that answers your question, Joe. Um, oh, were there, the next question I have is, were there things that made you think Drupal wasn't the option to go forward with, and how would an account rep best put your mind at ease? Uh, I think that you know, coming into it com completely new as an organization and not being exposed to Drupal, it's it's certainly just a fear of the unknown. Um, 
how can this community and this open source platform compete with the likes of Oracle or Microsoft or these companies that you know, have billions of dollars to build a platform? Um, how will it scale? Um, you know, the, the, this, the, the uncertainty about all this code being contributed from people and not having any visibility really to where they got that code from, going back to the indemnity question. So I think those are definitely things that, that made us question early if Drupal was the right option. Um, I think that, you know, again, being a good partner, you're able to help your clients go through those questions one at a time, look around, obviously exposing them to some of the other very large Fortune 100 companies, if not 500 companies that are on this platform. Um, you know, that's another thing I think that would be powerful to do is figure out a way to help your client engage with other clients their size, perhaps leveraging connections at Drupal Org. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how that would work, but some way to, to, to give them the confidence. Um, I do that with our partner, where other clients that are looking to, to, to move to Drupal, um, we have, you know, conversations like this. Uh, so to help them understand the decision making that went through. Okay, so going from the dev team, I think that's all the questions for now. Um, the hosting. So, you know, depending upon how you decide to do this, uh, I'm guessing most of your clients aren't going to try to move everything they have from one place to to a, a, a new place. So if you, if you have a mix of hosting partners, which we do, uh, we have some stuff at Amazon and some stuff at, at Rackspace, Making sure that you involve them early on uh, in the architecture, um, it'll eliminate any longer term potential for finger pointing, um, and it obviously will help the combined environments work the best way they can together. Um, for us, it wasn't just a multi-phase approach of, well, we want to move this thing first into the Drupal stack, and then we'll add this thing later. There are some components that will never move, um, like a single social sign-on tool that we already have, um, a rating system that we would be harder for us to port out, even if Drupal could do just a good, as good a job, if not better, to port it out and port all the content and all the ratings and all of the users out. Uh, so there'll be some things that will live or need to live in harmony long term. So figuring out how to work those integrations and make sure that the partners are involved early uh, is another decision I'd make. And kind of the last area there, looking just real quick, is there any new questions coming in? Um, was there a specific uptropic training that your developers who had a little exposure to Drupal really engaged with and began to understand the power of the platform? Um, I don't think there was a specific one, and for me, that's kind of my miss, is that uh, I probably would have worked with a partner to do um, some of the courses that Megan outlined earlier in the session, an, an intro to Hello to Drupal, followed up by a Drupal-focused training organization that would do a week or two, uh, and I hope I'll say this in a way that's meaningful to all of you, but as a non-developer, uh, my perception is that there's a, there's a framework that you need to work within that's not the same kind of thing that you might do if you were just a great PHP developer, for example. And so making sure that they understand the framework that you work within and how, I think, also to to engage within the community and to, to look for modules to help solve problems, um, some of those things are different, uh, and, and how you would do that than just Googling a code fix, for example. And so I think a little, a little more discipline up front into how to get involved in the community, how to leverage the framework um, would be things I would do differently. But I don't have a specific one because I messed up and didn't do that. <laughs> um, uh, Megan asked a question back to the point I made is, w would you guys all think that there's a uh, value in the association uh, facilitating these kinds of intros where if you needed help to talk to a larger company on behalf of your client or put your client together with, I don't know how big they could get, but you guys all know, you know, Time Warner, New York Stock Exchange, White House, being able to introduce them to and have some kinds of conversation. So she's asking a question if you all think that'd be valuable. So if you do, I guess we should do it. We should figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah, we can definitely do that. The and the final area is we've talked about it. Go ahead. Shoot. Oh, sorry, I was going to say we can certainly do that. And even at DrupalCon Austin next year, we're looking to have a site owner track. So um, Brad and his peers can come together and get content and network and just learn how to expand uh, Drupal adoption. And so we're, we're definitely looking to make these touch points happen in the community. But feel free to reach out and let me know what would work best for you and what your needs are because we're always evolving. Great. 
last areas around the, the overall Drupal community, and I, I've touched on it a few times, but I've been really focused on developers. Um, one of the things that I would want to do differently uh, is get my whole team involved early. Make sure that the analysts understand the roles that they can play in terms of helping write a requirement or perform a test on an existing module. Uh, making sure that the marketers understand the ecosystem and how it works together and how by choosing to be involved, um, you build a community which you know provides good things out but also opens up your connections and opportunity to, to bring good things in that, that others are doing. And that you know really just everybody can help. Everybody can help if we can if we can find what it is that you're passionate about, um, which hopefully you guys feel like something like what I'm doing today is because I was passionate about trying to figure out how to help. I was I was probably high on DrupalCon Portland when I met uh, Megan, and uh, I really wanted to figure out a way because the energy I felt there was something I wanted to participate in, and uh, it just wasn't clear to me. And so that would be something that I would push my team stronger to do and something we're, we're definitely getting better at. And then, uh, yeah, just build awareness for the community. So I just got another question. What role did marketing play in the evaluation? How do you, I think that might be a duplicate. Um, sorry, I think I got that one, Joseph. But yeah, just it was, a, it was a partnership between us to evaluate the software. And that's how we work together in building the selection criteria. A couple of other points that are, I think are super relevant, um, as you are probably all experiencing, uh, you know, the demand for the talent and the price that the talent can demand is, is only going up as there's more demand for this product. So I think it's important to let and make sure your clients know that and that they're thinking about that. Uh, they have some market analysis to understand what the, what the rate is if they choose to convert somebody, um, knowing that they're going to build a lot into this person and that could make them more marketable. I think also built, figuring out ways to, to grow your own talent. Um, so either working with the local community college or college to make sure that they're offering some courseware that's going to provide the pipeline. Uh, another program that I'll throw out that I'm trying to figure out how to do is um, we have a lot of veterans returning to the United States. And uh, I'm in the middle of trying to develop some curriculum that would give them some introduction to web technologies. and particularly some focus on, on Drupal and, and to try to provide internships for them. So that you need to be creative as, this, as the demand for this product continues to grow so that you can bring in and build your own quality team. So thinking about that is an important component that the leadership might not be thinking about, but the technology team, it, you're, it, whoever you're working with needs to be thinking about. And uh, just figuring out how to partnership with other firms to, to host workshops is another idea we've been doing here in Austin. Um, work with colleges to, to build the curriculum and, and, and just figure out how to make it more accessible to, to a younger generation so that we continue to build, build that pipeline. Um, so, so the, the question that just came in is um, presumably we're, we're all in, the, uh, in Drupal to, to win it. Um, can we elaborate on what other CMSs you looked at and that you're evaluating? Are there any items that Drupal's competitors did better at in your mind? Um, certainly, you know, looked into Adobe, uh, WordPress, Expression Engine, and about several other products. I mean, there's some compelling tie-ins, you know, with what, what Adobe's doing and with how you can get licensing that you can share. I think they just had an announcement last week that their content tools are now integrated into a platform that will allow them to create more responsive websites natively. Um, so I, I think that there, there are some things that are attractive there that, you know, you want to look at when you say, what are the tools that my developer currently uses today? Um, what's kind of the, the fewest changes or the fewest barriers? Um, so if they're using a different code repository, that might be something to consider on the development side. You know, is there an easy integration with their project management tools? Uh, we haven't really talked about that at all, but but look, you know, helping guide them on that. Um, if they're you know big .NET shop, that's going to be a huge change. Thinking about moving from TFS to to Jira or Basecamp or whatever you might. You know, help them recommend whatever code repositories they're using and how they push and deploy would be different. And similarly on the content side, what tools are they using to create and how easy is it for them to integrate with a given platform are, are definitely things that we considered and, and, and caused, a, frankly, a few products to rise a little bit higher than Drupal. But I think, again, when you take a step back as a business and look at, okay, well, what's our overall investment in Adobe and who owns Adobe and what are they doing? What else do we have with them? Um, and, and, and then again, I, I don't want to um, lose sight that 
what we really liked a lot about this is the ability to create the unique experience that we know we want and what tools were going to give us the, the most capability to, to do that uh, at, a, at a pace that's right for us and not wait on a release cycle. So those are some of the, the things that caused competitors that might have risen in one or two areas to, to, to lose overall. So hopefully that got you close to what you wanted there, Dave. Um, so the next question is, um, what does someone in my position need to get up to speed about Drupal 8 and how can partners and vendors best approach clients to start the Drupal 8 conversation? Um, I think that the presentation that uh, that Dries did, and then I got to see the gentleman from Symphony speak at um, DrupalCon, gives me uh, a strong insight into what it can do. Um, I think the timeline is going to be different depending upon the size of your client, uh, or maybe the 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 level of risk that they accept. Like I, I, I would not think that Drupal 8 would be right for us for probably two years. And partly that's because I've only been on Drupal 7 platform for one year. And so doing a major site redesign, you, you know, you need to get some return on investment before you can do it. Um, secondly, we don't want to be a technology company and an early adopter. So we'd rather wait and, and as they say, kind of ride the wave. Let, let some others go before us and start to figure out kind of what's best of breed that we can adopt. Um, and the third thing is, um, you know, just make sure that it's make sure that it's a mature product. Uh, so I would want to, you know, want to know again if the size of the company, what's their risk for trying something new. So I think exposing them to that there's a path there, and exposing them to, uh, in my small development mind, how much more flexible and API driven it's going to be, are, are things that are exciting to us because it lets me consider how I can change back end and integration points out with, with a little bit more ease is kind of some high level things I took away with it. Um, the partnership with Symphony and, and a stronger framework um, is, is interesting as well. But for me, uh, it's a little early to, to think about building a site up based upon the level of investment we have and, and where I see uh, it is in, uh, evolving in the marketplace. Uh, the next one is looking to switch to CMS. How can I shop my payments at evaluation and switch to partner? Uh, Drupal shop finds an account who's looking to switch their CMS. Uh, how can a shop help them with that evaluation and best pitch Drupal in their business? Uh, well, hopefully some of the things I've said today will give you some insight. Um, I, I think that it's, you know, really looking at what their needs are and um, this is something I, I, I try to focus on going back to the win-win thing. I'm not saying this should be your answer, but sometimes it's okay letting the partner know that this isn't the right time or this isn't the right product for you. Um, and, and, and just being a, being a good partner. I think when they have a compelling interest, you, you know, selling the story, selling the points that, that we had today and making sure they understand the full cost. Uh, so a lot of what your question is, Joe, is kind of what I'm trying to do today is to give some insight into what else it is that, that we're evaluating on um, and, and, and making sure that their overall team is involved. I think if, if you if you get too technology focused and don't involve the marketing team, then that's going to be really disruptive for them. If you only involve the marketing team and not the technology team, then that's either going to be disruptive to the technology team or or you look at the option of maybe outsourcing the technological component with somebody who can host it and manage it for them or a long-term relationship with you as the partner to, to host it, deploy for them, and those kinds of things. So it kind of depends on, I guess, what they're trying to get out of it. Um, another question in how high up the company did the final CMS decision go? Um, I, it involved our C-level team. So for us, that's the highest level in technology and marketing. So they were two drivers uh, and part of probably the final five to seven people um, that, made, that made the final decision. So I think that they were, they were heavily engaged. Uh, the next question is, what considerations have you given to integrated commerce packages within the Drupal platform, Ubercart, commerce, et cetera? Uh, I'd say we've been looking hard at it. We have a current commerce provider. Um, one of the things that uh, we have to think about, and, I, and it would be another point to advise your clients in regards to commerce in general, is just what the PCI implications are with it. Um, and for us, uh, tax is an important and complicated thing. Um, you'd be surprised how many different legislative entities want to tax on if the water is bubbly and flavored versus flat. Um, so there's a kind of a complicated product hierarchy there. 
So those are some some things that that we're looking to to move towards. I think where we'll evolve over time is 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 connecting closer to our point of sale, um, and and not because we don't think that that Drupal Commerce is a platform that can be successful. It's because a lot of what ours is about is what product do we have in the store at this time um, that you might want, and we need to know that directly from the point of sale. And then when getting back to kind of the taxing and the credit card transactions. I'd say that we want to continue to use uh, Drupal uh, as our content and experience front end, but we'll probably plug in different integration points based upon more of the supply chain and the fulfillment um, that we that we already have investment in. Okay, I think that's it for the questions for now. So going back to I think my last one here, and that's good. We've got a few minutes still. Um, training. You know, there's never enough time, but you, you've got to try and you've got to push that. Uh, I think that that's another area I would do something different, as, and we talked about it with the developers, but it's also thinking about how you can come be creative with training with, with everybody that's going to use the product. Because you know change is always hard, so if you don't practice a lot, then on day one it's a huge amount of change and it's very disruptive. So some options that I hope you find are useful that, that I would do differently is think about building and standing up some internal marketing sites or some internal, maybe it's a project site, some way that it lets your client have a chance to practice with the tool in a way that's not production, right? A way that you can allow them to push content, go through the process, edit stuff, have your development team build modules, deploy modules. Um, so that's hopefully a, an idea that you'll find valuable and something that I wish we had done differently is, is again, standing up some kind of internal site or sites that lets everybody practice and play with it uh, so they can learn how to do their job and learn some of the problems and complications that, that they don't even tell you that they're doing every day until you go live and, and then you find out of, oh my God, I do it this way. But you never told me that. They, as they practice through it, they'll, they'll realize it. So I don't have any other questions coming in, but we have, uh, I think, another 10 minutes or so. Let's see if anything pops up. Oh, Mike, is there a question around C-level decision maker? Sorry, um, um, like a CXO, CIO, CMO. Um, it's a term we use internally to try to decide. We have our, our C-team, which uh, in the case of this decision making was our CIO or CTO and, and our CMO, our Chief Marketing Officer. Um, and then our E-team is kind of the next level down. Good question. Um, next question is, did they require a demo on the use of Drupal? Uh, I think, yeah, that's definitely part of our evaluation uh, to make a big investment like we did and to be able to figure out ways that other companies are using it, so one of the things that we worked with our partner on was getting some non-competes in place so that we could go sit down with other shops that use it, talk to their marketing team over a day or two visit sometimes. Um, how's this product working? What do you think so far? How long have you been using it? What's your strategy? Is it helping you achieve your strategy? So I think some site visits, again, depending upon the size of your client and how much investment they're going to make in this, all those kinds of things are more and more important. So. Um, they didn't ask to see a, a demo from the standpoint of take me to Drupalize me, show me how a module works. It was more, let's sit down with another business, our peer group, that's converted and talk to them about what the experience has been like and how happy they are and what challenges they've had. So we did that with a few different, few different um, colleagues with a few different, plat different platforms to help in the evaluation. Thanks, Max. Appreciate that. Next one was, what was the biggest negative of Drupal and how did you overcome the objection? Yeah, I mean, going back to some of the points earlier, I don't know that there were, there were negatives. It's just, uh, you know, it's the normal human behavior of fear of change and fear of the unknown and what is this Drupal thing? And so I think it's r really exposing to your clients how uh, I feel in just the last couple of years, maybe five years, you've seen this seismic shift from nonprofits and um, colleges and universities using it in really cool and exciting ways to to a to a big enterprise utilization and creating awareness for them that yeah we realize this is a big decision and we just want to reinforce with you that there are many other big businesses that use this and obviously it's really compelling if they're in a similar market space right 
Um, if they're, you know, if they're heavy into advertisement, show them what the Time Warner Suite's doing and and some of the other big players. Um, if they're really social, you know, there's some great nonprofit sites that are out there that do great things. And obviously, I look to, to you know to the White House as a huge example of something that scales, something that has tons of volume, has a lot of interactivity. So finding finding um, examples for them that are, are who they aspire to be or who who they want to be or what the product they want to have in the marketplace. I think really helps overcome any fear or concern they have around it being a viable long-term platform. Questions are coming in well now. Um, Dave asks if I'm comfortable talking about the Drupal partners we selected. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that when we say Drupal, there's you know there's there's a there's kind of a content component, there's a development component, and there's a hosting component. Um, and we we explored a few different players. Um, we had some great work done with the uh, VML um, and initially went with uh, Acquia for, for our hosting and managed services. Um, again, we knew it was a technology we weren't familiar with and we were concerned that our internal team uh, would be able to scale and understand the technology in a way that would support our, our, our website volume. So uh, we created a partnership um, with Acquia to help us with that. Uh, next part of your question is, once you decided on Drupal, what was the vendor partner selection process like? Uh, I think it was it kind of has, it was hand in hand as we were looking at the different CMS systems that we wanted to evaluate. We were also looking at who's effective and who has a strong track record for content creative and development in these areas. Uh, and so the, I'd say there were lots of conversations and discussions where when we would meet with other companies or we would meet with um, you know an agency, they would be talking about the different technologies with us. So it wasn't really a separated discussion for us. It was it was, it was commingled a lot. Um, Tom asked uh, Megan if these slides are available. Yes, I think Megan's recording all this, so the slides will be available as well as all of the question and answer. And then Jeff wanted to know what else what else we looked at. Uh, my memory is the ones that I mentioned, WordPress, Expressions, Adobe, and, and we were a WordPress site before, so that would be another one that we include in the evaluation. So I guess that's five. Uh, when you started looking for information about Drupal on the web, papers, presentations, et cetera, how did you find that experience and what would have made it easier and better? I think I think our partner guided us a lot in that. Um, like I can remember earlier trying to hire Drupal and getting guidance from Acquia on where to post jobs, um, how, how I needed to be active in the community and have a profile to have any kind of credibility and to attract talent. Um, so I think that it's it's that's another great thing that you guys can help the companies with is is how to get involved and and you know where to look for partners and if you only do development you know having a having a uh, you know a referral for for a creative side that that you can work collaboratively with are, are always strong. Um, I think naturally you know Drupal.org is is another great site for us to find and be active in the community and and find the resources. I think when it got down to wanting to talk to other companies. Um, we are fortunate in that if we make calls or people know people at other companies, um, they're always open to us having conversations, especially if they're not a competitor. So you know, we can we can get in the door of other of other companies and have those kinds of conversations. Um, so if, when it came to finding those other companies, that wasn't a resource I did on the web. It was more networking within my own company of who knows who here, um, and and obviously probably the same way you guys do a lot of stuff. Just just googling. Anyone that's made an announcement about their sites on Drupal, who are they? What do they do? Is their business like ours? But uh, I'd say my partner and the, and the Drupal site were probably the two biggest sources of information. Um, well, making it easier, Joe, it'd be easier if somebody did it all for me. You know, I mean, <laughs> if I could if I could go to Gartner or Forrester, which you know you can, and that'd be another good resource for your for your for your partners, is looking at kind of the magic quadrant is the Gartner phrase, right? If those clients already have access to those resources, they're great because you can look at CMS and see how it's evaluated using that criteria. And oftentimes you can get from those articles um, other companies that are using it. And if they're a part of the Gartner group, oftentimes they'll provide information back about what their experience has been. Um, so those would be two other resources that I didn't mention that hopefully will help you. Uh, 
Next question is this a good one? Uh, I, hadn't, I haven't thought about this. So let me give it a second thought. The, do you see only big agencies getting the contracts in the enterprise field, or do you see chances for small agencies and freelancers? Um, I think it's for me. It's uh, it's matching the right company and skills to be successful with the project. So I don't naturally gravitate towards um, a big company. I I try and research the company to understand what you're good at what 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 is your area of expertise and and nobody should advertise that they're good at everything um, so what we again trying to find win-win relationships we want put partners in we want to put partners in position to, so everyone is going to be successful so for me it's a lot about the engagement and what I want to get out of it so we have used some big shops like VML and Aquia we're also working with a with a local shop that hopefully we'll be able to create some exciting news on soon uh, and it's a five-person team, uh, so I think that we we try to put people in position to to be successful. So for for me, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I would say that you know that's probably a question that you want to know from your partner because if they they may be more apprehensive about a smaller shop, but if you really focus on letting people do what they're good at, there's a lot of one, two, five-man shops out there that can that can do some great stuff. Um, next question was how can we measure performance or tune with Drupal site? Uh, Krishna, that's something that I cannot help you answer. Uh, I will admit that uh, that's a big part of what I, what I use Acquia for, uh, so I'm not familiar with what tools would be out there. Megan, can we get Krishna a resource for, for tuning and performance with, with Drupal sites? Yeah, um, Krishna, I'll follow up directly and point you to some resources. All right, do cool. we have any more questions? Nothing else is popping up. Well, Brad, this was really uh, a really thorough presentation. And I think uh, it's clear that it really resonated with everyone because we had some really strong questions and answers. And um, and uh, hopefully this will be kind of like the start of all the knowledge sharing for our Drupal businesses. You talked about maybe getting your CMO on here too to kind of give his his or her perspective of what that evaluation process looked like. and. And, um, and how to sell it to a CMO, because that's a whole other kind of conversation, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, I, um, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to email them to me at megan at association.drupal.org. And I'm happy to um, send them over to you, Brad, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, that'd be great. And then what we could do is answer them through a blog post and get them out to everybody that way. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely fill out the survey and other ideas you have. Again, I don't want this to be a one-time shot for me, so if there's other topics that I can help address, I'd love to do that, or I can engage other team members here to bring other areas of the business to, to, to talk to you and answer questions that you have. So please yeah. let us know. That's great. And if there's other th uh, topics that anyone wants to hear about uh, to help your business, whether it's around talent acquisition or expanding sales and marketing. I see there's a certain someone here with an expertise in marketing automation. I mean, topics like that. We just want to hear all the different ways that we can help you, and we'll find speakers like Brad um, to present on that. Uh, so let us know in the survey. But in the meantime, let me just do my uh, little plug of some things coming up. Again, we've got DrupalCon Prague at the end of the month, from the 23rd to the 27th of September. And um, again, you'll see some changes of our Drupal cons in 2014. DrupalCon Austin, we're going to have a track just for site owners. And you'll see uh, some more news about that. So sign up for our newsletter to follow this. But this is a great time to bring your clients to DrupalCon. We're going to have content to help them understand how to use Drupal even more. Uh, opportunities to network with their peers to see what they're doing with Drupal. And it's a really great way to deepen your footprint in these accounts. Um, and again, if you have uh, a training component of your company um, or your personal business, um, then you should participate in Drupal Global Training Days. It's a great way to grow your local community, but it's also a great way to get leads to upsell them on other training programs that you have. Um, so just moving on to the next slide, if you like today's uh, content and the work that the Drupal Association is doing, I encourage you to become an individual member which is 30 US dollars or about 22 euros. Um, or if you're a company and you wanna give back, you can become an organization member. Uh, there's a whole s s range of price points there. It starts at $200 US or 73 euro. 
Um, and if you would like to give back to the community um, and get even more benefits, if you go to the next slide, you can become a supporting partner. And this is for um, Drupal businesses who want to get more visibility into the community and to really show their thought leadership. Um, and they can do that through um, webinars, through blog posts, information in our newsletter. Um, also, we have benefits that help you secure talent through job boards. We're going to be creating a job board on Drupal.org next year. And you'll get some opportunities uh, to post there. And you'll get some savings. So uh, you can go to DrupalCon and sponsor and get discounts. And you can also get a free pass to our CXO event at all of the DrupalCons, which is a great networking mentoring program for um, Drupal business leaders. And there's a lot more that comes with these uh, programs, but there's different tiers. So you can pick the one that's right for you. But we uh, certainly hope you'll consider this opportunity. And in the survey, you can let us know if you'd like more information or if you'd like someone to contact you about it. Um, and just so you know, if you go to the next slide, uh, the funds from this program is funneled to improving Drupal.org. We are hiring a technical team um, that will cost to the tune of about half a million dollars. That's being supported by our partner programs. And the, uh, the technical team right now that we have in place is almost done upgrading Drupal.org to Drupal 7, which once that's done, then we can make some significant changes that's really going to make it easier for developers to collaborate and site builders to come in and select modules and know why they should choose this one over that one. Um, and it just is going to help accelerate the program and onboard new community members so they can find out um, you know, how, to, how to engage with the community, how to use the, the project, and uh, how to contribute back. So lots of, lots of improvements coming because of our supporting partners. And um, if you go to the, the link below, you can learn more about the program, but also find out who some of our partners are. We have several here on the call today. And... Um, we're just very thankful for what they're contributing and giving back. So with that, I also want to thank Brad Power for um, speaking today and sharing your knowledge. I think this is the kind of insight we really need in order to grow our business and expand Drupal into the enterprise, because we're all here just to grow Drupal's adoption and, um, and also to find out how we can accelerate the project to really meet your needs. Uh, so, so thank you very much for your time and your thoughtfulness and, and the content you've provided. Thanks, I enjoyed it. Hope everybody else found it useful. Great. Okay, well, we have a lot of people saying thank you in the presentation, and if there's any questions unanswered, I will pull them all together, send them to Brad, and we will do a blog post out. And you, we also recorded today, so everyone here will receive an email with a link to the recording. Okay, so with that, um, stay tuned for our next webinars that we'll, we'll be announcing shortly. And uh, Okay, and thanks, Brad. I'm going to close this out. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.